Now we need to talk about the electric potential energy that exists between two point charges. So the electric potential energy between two point charges looks like this. The electric potential energy is equal to KQ1, Q2 over R. And that is another boxed equation. KQ1, Q2 over R. And hopefully this looks very familiar only without the square. So with the introduction of this one, we get even more confused as to which one to use, whether we put the square in or not, because it's just we have two equations that look very similar. Notice again, R is going to be the distance between the center of charges of the two charges, it's the same basic equation, except we have R instead of R squared. So what's going on here is anytime we have two charges, there is an electric potential energy that exists between these two charges. So notice, this equation was for the electric potential energy in a constant electric field. This is not a constant electric field, this is for point charges. And this is pretty typical in this class when we deal with uh, charges. We're either going to talk about a constant electric field or point charges. We're going to have two different sets of equations for those. If you, if you get an opportunity to take AP, you will get to deal with other shapes of electric fields as well. But in this class, those are pretty much the two that we deal with. So, looking at this positive and this negative charge, if I were to take this positive charge and negative charge right here and I were to let go of them, what class would happen to these two charges? They would, they would accelerate toward one another. There's a force of attraction, right? So they're going to accelerate toward one another. Therefore, what happens to the electric potential energy as they are accelerated toward one another? Class. It decreases. Which means, and this is just a little bit confusing, R is going to get smaller, right? So what happens to 1 over R? It gets bigger. So initially you would look at this and say, well, wouldn't the electric potential energy then get bigger? Right? Who could explain why it actually doesn't? It gets smaller. Rick? Well, like the force of electricity is like KQ1 Q2 over R squared. Well, that's the force, true. Yeah, and then like if the particles get closer to forces greater, and if the force is greater, then the potential energy is No, it's actually directly in this equation right here. Uh, I agree that the force is going to change. With the, there's a whole way that it changes, but I'm just saying, how is it that this could actually get smaller? Uh, well, if R is decreasing, then you'd be dividing by less, so the number would be bigger. Right, I know, but I'm saying that the electric potential energy actually does get smaller, even though you initially look at this and say it's going to get bigger. This electric potential energy class, is it going to be positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Because one charge is positive, one charge is negative, right? So if you have this, the magnitude of this is going to get greater, but it's getting more and more negative, which means it's actually getting smaller. It's actually getting more and more negative. I know, it's all fun. Okay, here we go. So we have the electric potential energy again. This is between two point charges. 